The attorney for Stormy Daniels, Michael Avenatti, joins us now. Michael, um, first of all, can you tell us where these new documents came from? Well, our summary we produced, but mm -hmm. as far as the information that is uh, that we use, that we based our summary on, we're not going to disclose what, where that came from. It's our work product. But look, here's what I will say. Um, as of this morning, we have NBC News that has independently verified what we said. Mm -hmm. We have the New York Times who's independently verified what is contained within the document. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's two or three other independent <coughs> news organizations that have uh, confirmed the veracity of, of what we set forth in our uh, summary document that we issued yesterday. So we stand behind what we put in the document. It's 100% accurate, uh, and that's that. Yeah, and, 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 and look, let me, let, yeah. let, me, let me say this. To the extent that it's not accurate, mm -hmm. the president and Michael Cohen should clear this up this morning. They okay, should release so, the bank statements this morning. So, okay, so uh, it, if they are accurate, and uh, NBC, by the way, our reporting is that they are reporting show that the, they appear to support the account of the transaction, so it looks highly likely. Um, what do you deduce that these tra uh, that these transactions, that this money was used for? Does it connect at all to other women? I, I don't know yet whether this particular uh, account connects mm -hmm. to other women, but what I will say is, is that this is an enormous amount of money it is. that is flowing into this account, uh, beginning in October. Uh, November, December time period of 2016, you've got millions of dollars that are, that are being deposited into this account. Michael Cohen appears to be selling access to the President of the United States. We now have multiple uh, different things, supposedly, that Michael Cohen was doing for all these companies. Now we hear from Novartis that he was hired on health care matters. Evidently, he's a doctor. Uh, one of the companies mentioned they hired him for real estate matters. He's a real estate agent. Um, another company uh, stated that they hired him for accounting advice. Evidently, he's an accountant, so he's a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant, and a real estate agent. I'm just a lawyer. I'm not, I'm not right. that bright, I guess. Before we go, open this up to the panel, do you have anything more? You keep saying you have to vet these other women that have called in. <clears throat> Are, is there anything more on other women, other payments to other women? We don't, we don't have an update on the other women. So, Michael, as you look through this, what we initially thought about essential consultants was that it was set up purely to make the payment to Stormy Daniels. That was the thought. And now through these new documents, which NBC has, has verified, it appears that it was much, much more than that. $4.4 million that we know of so far coming through there. Is there evidence that those payments by companies like AT&T led to a meeting with Donald Trump? Or is it possible that Michael Cohen was just saying, hey, I'll, I'll get in the president's ear for you. Give me the money. In other words, that Michael Cohen took all this money for himself and that it wasn't spread around and it didn't lead to any interactions with the White House. Well, here's what we know. We know that the president took, I believe, a dinner or a lunch with the head of Novartis uh, at right. some point into this relationship. We understand that it was a one-year relationship now based on the statement that Novartis just issued. Uh, it, also, the amount of that payment, the per-month payment of $99,980 is a very unusual amount. Yeah. It's $20 short of a hundred thousand dollar payment it appears uh, and we haven't confirmed this but uh, we've heard from individuals that the the reason why it would not have been a hundred thousand dollars is because of the reporting there's an internal reporting yeah. requirement at Novartis that would have required the parent company in Switzerland to sign off on any such arrangement now I don't know if that's accurate or not but that's what we've heard as of this morning but look there's a lot of questions being raised this morning relating to these payments. Why did Michael Cohen take this money? He's not a registered lobbyist. He's not making adequate disclosures. You showed earlier in the broadcast the segment from January of 2017 when the president signed the, the ban on lobbying. Meanwhile, it appears that his right-hand attorney is selling access and holding himself out as an expert in all of these other disciplines and not disclosing it to the American people. This whole thing stinks. It doesn't smell right. And again, I'm going to say it again. Michael Cohen and the president should cause these bank statements of Michael Cohen to be released this morning if there's nothing improper about this. We're not talking about a lot of information. They can PDF the document, they can release it to the media, and the media can go through it and can report back whether it's proper or not. Are you suggesting that Michael Cohen does not have a PhD in aerospace technology and pharmaceutical policy? Is that what you're um, I'm, I'm not only going to suggest that, but I'm going to state that <laughs> have, as have, a fact. But look, this, I have, this no, guy... I have two real questions. I don't want to... I don't want to... No, but this guy's the Da Vinci of our time, evidently. <laughs> okay, two questions for you. One is, if this was a, uh, 
a vehicle for currying favor with the president by making these uh, fairly large donations to them, to essentials. How do you explain some of these rather small donations? One check for $2,998, one for $4,250. Very little amounts. Why would someone give just that? Well, we, we don't know the full extent of these okay. particular individual amounts. They've been included in what we've released. I mean, I think that the bigger picture is that we don't know, as we sit here today, the full extent of the and deposits. And, and here, here's the bigger question. I raised this last night. Where did the money go? Did all of it go to Michael Cohen? Did some of it go back to the Trump Organization? Did some of it ultimately well, find its way to the president? The other question I had was Elliot Brody paid into this fund. There was a very intriguing, highly speculative piece the other, uh, yesterday, I believe, about his own payments to a playmate uh, for an affair and whether, in fact, it was him. Uh, who was covering up the affair. I'm curious if you are looking in, in an investigative capacity into the role that he played and why he was depositing money into this fund and his relationship with Michael Cohen. Is that part of your overall but most investigative work? Most certainly. That's one of the things we're looking at. And let me tell you what I find to be highly unusual about that as an attorney that's been on both the plaintiff and the defense side um, when it's come to settlements. It's very unusual to me as to why you would have a defendant or potential defendant, Mr. Brody, if in fact it was Mr. Brody, and I raised that with Mika the last time I was on the show, that yeah. there's, in my mind, there's a big question about this, but I don't want to digress quite yet. It's very unusual to have um, a defendant pay his or her attorney a flat rate for negotiating a settlement. Normally, you'll pay an attorney on a hourly basis, a defendant, a potential defendant. It's not like a plaintiff who's doing it on a, on a contingency basis. Yeah. So here it appears that Michael Cohen was paid, you know, uh, at least $187,500 uh, or more for his work on behalf of supposedly Mr. Brody negotiating this settlement. That's a lot of money. I mean, Michael Cohen probably only spent 10, 20, maybe even 50 hours worth of work. I doubt it was 50 hours negotiating this potential settlement. I don't understand why he was paid this round figure by Mr. By Mr. Brody or why these payments were made. It doesn't make a lot of sense and it's very suspicious to me. Let me tell you. Your, your document says, points out that within 75 days or so of the payment to your client, $500,000 from Columbus Nova private equity fund controlled by a Russian oligarch went into the Cohen account. Well, I think actually the report's a little different than that. There was payments over time beginning in January of 2017. The first payment, you're correct, was within about 75 days. So just in a, in a layman's way, what do you think, what light do you think this sheds on the enduring questions about the president and his relationship with Russia and Russians? Well, Michael Cohen, the personal attorney to the president, at the right hand of the president, who, by the way, if you go on his LinkedIn page this morning, you'll see that he still lists himself as an attorney for the president of the United States, and he lists himself as being with Trump Organization, as I, as I recall. I checked it last night. Your viewers can check me out on that. But look, you have the, the right hand of the president, the personal attorney of the president, um, associating with individuals with significant Russian ties in January of 2017, accepting uh, money from right. individuals with Russian ties. I mean, I, look, this does not smell right, and I'm not alone in this. There's a reason why Mr. Mueller um, and his team questioned the oligarch at the airport here recently relating to these exact payments. I, I, think, uh, I think CNN reported that last night. Okay, so uh, let's devolve now. Mr. Brody, is he, did he take the fall for the president on another situation with another woman? Is that what you're seeing here? We, what we, we don't know yet. Does it look like that? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of issues. Your colleague here raised the question or raised the article that appeared in, I think it was New York Magazine, New York Magazine yeah. yesterday. is a pretty extensive piece. I think there's some significant Does questions. As to to any what happened. Women that have come to you who have approached you or you are in contact with? Not that I know of. Okay. And um, you told me before we went on the air not to ask you about the DVD. <laughs> You're not going to release the DVD. But what is on the DVD? I, again, Mika, I'm not going to answer any questions about <laughs> the DVD. It? Is it, what, what is on it? Though? I'm not going to tell you what's on the DVD <laughs> yet. I'm not going to disclose that this morning. We're here to talk about a lot of very critical issues relating to this case. We so can have a it's whole. It's not important. No, it? no, it's very important. We can have a whole show. If you'll devote a show to what's on the DVD, maybe we'll release it. Okay. Where is the DVD? Miss Brzezinski, Miss Brzezinski, will you stop place. badgering? the witness. I'm not. I'm thank, just asking you, you to like, ask, to come forward with the DVD that ask. he deleted. It's pretty simple. And not answered. answered. Ms. Brzezinski, stop. Michael Avenatti.
Thank you. Thank Coming you. up, President Trump is up and tweeting, oh goody, about last night's primaries, mm -hmm. calling it a quote, great night for Republicans, tremendous voter energy and excitement, and all candidates are those who have great chance of winning in November. We'll dig into the results ahead on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.